<laughs> Hi, my name is Dan Nelson, and I uh, thank you for joining me again for another free art lesson. We've come down to, or up to perhaps, drawing arms. Now, if you haven't checked any of the other free art lessons, go back and find out what you've missed, and then uh, come back and join me for arms. Um, as I said before, one of the principles that I'm trying to follow as I do these quick art lessons is the principle of going from simple to complex. Now, because these are very short lessons, we're not thankfully getting very complex at all, but I want to start very simple. Let's talk about the arm, and if you were with me when I was talking about the chest box, chest unit, that the part of our body that does not uh, flex, then you'll recognize what I'm doing here. If you weren't there, then go back and check it out, and then uh, you'll understand. I said that the shoulder, especially defined by the deltoid muscle, that's the large delta-shaped, deltoid, delta-shaped muscle um, at the top of our shoulder, is, is very closely reflected by a simple sphere that grows out of the outside corner of each shoulder. Again, now this is, this is very simple, but I'm starting there. So I want to show how the arm grows out from this sphere. First of all, uh, just a, a comment about length. Um, the upper arm and the lower arm are each about one and a half heads high, or about the, the height of neck plus head. Thus, when I put my arm on top of my head, this is as long as my head and my neck. Does that make sense? Head plus neck equals both ends of my arm. Now, let me start out in the interest of being simple. Just a, a real simple comment, and this applies to legs as well as arms. If you can understand that almost every, all of our limbs, I say that as though we've got a dozen or so, don't I? All of them, both of them, both legs and both arms, tend to be uh, elongated shapes that taper in at each end and the joint can be defined either as a, as a ball, a circle, or even perhaps even more accurately as a diamond shape. Now, I want you to understand that's just if you understand that by and large our upper arm curves, our lower arm curves, and the joint bulges. Does that make sense? The same is true with our leg. In fact, if we're not careful, that could, that could look a lot like a leg, couldn't it? Our thigh our calf, our knee, and our ankle. So if you can just remember, and I, I tend, as you can see, I tend to favor a diamond shape even more. I think it reflects a little bit more the, the uh, shape of that joint even than a sphere, than a ball. Let me progress then to a little more detail on the arm. If we start with the upper arm, the deltoid, the front of our upper arm is our bicep, and the back of our upper arm is our tricep. Now, the same thing is true on our leg. Our bicep tends to be shorter and squattier. Our tricep, our, did I say that right? Bicep, short, squatty, tricep, elongated. So if you simply get those two, we're not gonna be able to get much more complex than that in this free lesson. But if you keep those two things in mind, this is a, this is a left arm, right? This is somebody's left arm. Front of their arm is shorter and squattier curve. Back of their arm is longer. And then we have what I've already drawn, that, that diamond shape for a joint. And then the lower arm, the same is true for the lower arm. The inside muscle mass is shorter and a more uh, acute curve. The outside is a longer, straighter curve. Now what is actually happening here is all of the muscles in our lower arm are contained in the upper half. The lower half, the skinny part of our lower arm, is all tendons. That's why it is skinny, because tendons, of course, take up less room than muscles. So we have this curve, and, and as I've drawn it here, the, uh, the top of our lower arm almost forms a gentle S-curve. The lower arm is straight. Now, just a, co a couple comments. Let's get some, a little bit of skeletal structure straightened out. The upper arm has one bone in it. It's called the funny bone. That's right. You've heard it. You've heard it, in fact, haven't you? Uh, it's called the humerus. That's where we get the word funny bone from. 
and the the humerus bone at the bottom it ex, it's it expands real wide in fact if you look here you this bump right here and this bump right here are both the outer edges of that humerus isn't that funny <laughs> and uh, the lower arm has two bones in it I won't be able to get into much detail other than to tell you that the uh, upper part is called the radius and the lower is called the ulna. I'm sure you can read my good writing there, radius and ulna. Let me just give you a real quick trick to remember that, okay? You can, again, impress your friends. Um, if it'll help you to remember, if, feel your arm just like this. Run your hand along the bottom of either arm. And you, you feel that bone? That is your ulna. And you can remember that's the ulna because it's under. Begins with you, ulna, under. <laughs> it's as good as I can do today. The top bone is, if you hold your arm like this, you feel it, especially down here close to your wrist, is the radius. And of course, the, the light and the sun radiating down hits the top of your arm more than the bottom. So radius on top, ulna underneath. Does that make sense? And uh, they twist to, so that we have this mobility. Let me draw, just to define that, again, let me draw the someone's right arm viewed from the back. Are you with me? So I'm viewing it from the back. So this is the, the end of the uh, delta up here. All of this mass is the elongated tricep. Then, this is one of those places where that, where that diamond shape joint will really, really help you get the back of an elbow right. Um, this is the outer edge of the humerus bone, comes down like this, like this, like this, and then the, we see part of the ulna, actually, I'm, this is x-ray vision, you with me? This arm is going away from us, it's folded. If we, were to, if we were to straighten that arm out, then we might get something like this, and a little fold of skin, different folds, different places here to indicate uh, a elbow. What else should I say about arms? Let me do one more drawing real quick and we'll be done. From the front, I haven't really drawn what the arm looks like from the front. It, help, it is helpful to keep in mind, let's do an arm fully extended, that the, the uh, muscles on an arm, and I'm, this is probably a more developed male arm, the female arm has all the same muscles, they're just not as pronounced, of course, usually. Um, they, they tend to fold under each other. There's a delta muscle, there's a bicep, and it's very convenient that they both kind of have the same uh, teardrop shape. Can I call it that? Uh, apostrophe shape, if you will. And then the muscle mass of the upper arm tapering down to the wrist and so on. Then the, the armpit is very distinct on a well-developed person from the front, like myself, of course. So that gives you a, a basic idea of how an arm looks like when it's extended like that. I hope that's enough to get you going. I hope it's enough to get you interested. Please practice. If you want more information, there are tons of excellent books out there with much more detail. This is just enough to get you started. Thanks for joining me. I'm Dan Nelson. Give me some feedback on my website, dannelsonart.com, and I hope that you'll enjoy join me again. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.